Okay, so in this video, we're going to be working on the BMW E60. It's my car. Um, we're going to be changing the swell flaps. These have got a bad reputation of failing and falling into the combustion um, chamber itself and doing loads of damage. So we're going to change them as a precautionary measure. Now, with the BMW, for the 50-50 weight distribution, the engine sits slightly underneath the um the bulkhead so to speak so you've got to remove all this plastic to get full access now this is the pollen filter that i'm removing here you can see i'm just undoing that clip tucks in and then you need to undo this um the bonnet switch so it knows if the bonnet's open or not so just undo that once you've done that just lift up and remove really easy stuff and you can see it's pretty dirty under there so you're going to need to clean that so pretty much the same thing on the other side well exactly the same thing on the other side and um, as you can see there's just a little clip that actually attaches onto it just get a screwdriver pick it off comes off easy with a 13 mil socket you need to do the undo these three bolts that are there they're just plastic bolts which lock in they're just locking bolts so um, you need to undo the three there as you can see i'm doing there it's just like a quarter of a turn and then it's done um, try not to over twist it because like I said it's full of plastic and it will break then you've got a locating screw at the bottom there which you mustn't forget it's a Torx I believe it's a Torx 15 screw then this just lifts up and slides across like you see me do there give it a little wiggle pull it up it's going to be holding a little bit but you know just give it a little wiggle make sure these are all undone and they slide out pretty easy very much the same thing on the other side So now next is remove the engine cover. Now if you've got a little handy screwdriver, electric screwdriver, it's well worth it because there's so much little screws that you just go on and do like this. So just um, undo them. They're an Allen bolt. I believe they're four mil, five mil. Please don't quote me. Just have a whole set available so you can use it and pull it off. So I think there's five or six bolts in this piece here, but it's just pretty much like the video I'm showing you. Now to get this engine cover off, you need to remove the engine cap reach over, give it a little pull up, and that's it. Pulls up and slides out. Really, really easy stuff. Now you wanna put your engine cap back on because you don't want no issues, anything falling into there, and remove this cross member. I'm not sure if you have to remove it or not, but it was so easy to move, and just to get everything out of my way, I decided to move it. So just pull it off and give yourself extra access to remove the little rear cover at the back. So once the screws are removed from there, it's really simple. It's just lift up and remove because there's another screw that you need to get access to. So you have to remove this part. Okay, so now you need to remove the, in the injector loom that goes over the engine else you won't be able to get to the manifold. Now they've got three or four star shaped reverse Torx screws, three I think they've got, um, that just hold it down. So just get that undone, like I'm saying, it's all easy stuff and move on to the next part. But be very careful with this because it gets warm and goes cold and they can be a little bit brittle. So just be careful and just take them off uh, carefully, I should say. Okay, so now it's all loose, you wanna undo your injectors. Now what I did with these is, once I pushed the clip back, I pushed forward and then lifted up. So a little nudge forward and then lift back. I think it helps it just a little bit just to break the seal instead of yanking on it. Just a little push forward and, and take it back. Like I say, be very careful with these because these can be brittle due to the, the constant heat change the environment that it's in. But make sure not to pull on the wires themselves because it will give you problems and you don't want problems. So a little push forward and yank back. You should be all right. Not on the wires, on the actual plastic itself. So from here, it's just about disconnecting anything that's attached to the, um, the inlet manifold itself. So like I said, just put your finger in it, a little push up and a pull down. Um, you've got to remove the dipstick holder from there. That's a 10 mil socket. Um, yeah, just lean in there and get it. Make sure to keep all the bolts because you don't want to drop no bolts down there. So make sure to hold on to them. Um, it's got another little switch under there. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but it slides in like that. It hooks and slides in like that. So make sure you can slide it out. It's got like a little hook, like I said, so you've got to lift up the other end. Now it's just about undoing the 10 mil bolts on top of the manifold itself. It's all easy stuff. I mean, you can crack them first with a ratchet if you haven't got one of them, one of these impact sockets, but I'm lazy. So that's why I use this. 
but just run through it and undo it. Now that particular one I just done just there, that has a clip that holds on the cover. There you go. So make sure to keep that and remember where it goes. Now you've got some 11 mil bolts. You've got seven 11 mil bolts on the inside, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, just systematically go around and undo them. Now these bolts cut, these bolts come all the way off. Unlike the top ones you just saw me do a minute ago, they don't come all the way out, but these ones do. So make sure to retrieve them once you've undone them. So now there's one down the side, which is a little bit fishy. Um, there's another, I think it's an injector uh, loom sensor that's just down the side there. So just be careful when you're dealing with that. Um, it's a bit tricky to get to, but you can get to it because I've done it, so you can do it. It's that simple. Okay, so you need to undo the EGR um, valve, part of the EGR valve. Now, this just undoes, it's just a Jubilee clip, but it's a bit special, this one. So um, just undo it as much as possible and just ease the pipe away from the EGR itself. Nice and easy stuff. Um, some people take off the EGR completely. I just chose just to loosen it and just, and just pull it back to give you a bit of space. Now the next thing to do is remove the vacuum hose that goes onto the EGR valve itself. Um, I found my one to be cracked, so I replaced them. Um, as you can see, this plugs out. You've got a squeeze in the sides, but I had to use a bit of help from the uh, from a screwdriver. And there's just a little grommet that holds it on its track. So just undo that and just move everything away from it. Little split clip, lift it up, put it out. Really, really easy stuff. Don't put it all the way out. It's got a little locking groove, which it stays. Just, just ease everything up from it. So when it actually comes time to removing it, it will be free. Once you're happy, everything's loose and everything's disconnected, or as much as you can get disconnected, just start to lift this off. It will come off. Take your time and lean it over because you've actually still got the vacuum. There's a vacuum hose on the back, which is still connected, which I'm gonna show you. But once you've got it open and exposed, what I did was just put some tissue in these gaps, in these um, holes, because you don't want anything going down these inlet manifolds because it would just cause a catastrophe. It's part of the reason why we're actually fixing this so that the flaps don't fall down there. So this is what it should look something like this. You could use anything, plastic bags, anything you want. Now this is the vacuum hose that control the swell flaps. It's two Torx um, bits, I think it's Torx 15. You need to release that. Make sure you grab the screw and just ease it off the rod like that. Really simple. Now your inlet manifold is totally free and you can get to work on it. Okay, so this is your, um, this is how it works. That vacuum attaches onto that and swings them inlet, them, them flaps there. Now what happens over time is that they erode and fall into your cylinder head, which is a problem. So you need to remove this bar, which is just held in, it's just locked into place by them holders there and just pop it out. Really, really easy. We won't be needing that, but I'm just showing you, that's what we, that's, that's how it works. It slides backwards and forwards on that. Uh, all, like I said before, all very, very easy stuff, Torx wrench, and here's the screwdriver working again, so it's worth its weight in gold, you know? And if you do IKEA furniture, you could use it for that as well. <laughs> now these um, flaps, they just slip out. Um, yeah, just leave it them out. Nothing, they're not holding, nothing's holding them. But like I say, this is, you have to do this because this slips into your engine, it's gonna cost you loads and loads of money and for an hour's work, an hour and a half's work to not have this hassle, I think you just have to do it. Now the blanks are really simple. Um, the link in the description where I got them from, but it's really easy, just a matter of just pushing them back in. Really, really simple stuff. Push them in and screw them in. Make sure they're seated properly, they're not being pinched and just um, keep them in like that. Um, there's nothing to go wrong with these, so you don't have to worry. Um, in all honesty, the only difference that I've noticed installing these is that the turbo is a little bit more, it whistles a little bit more. Um, but apart from that, nothing else, nothing, nothing, nothing else is wrong with it. So um, just put these flaps in and replace the screws as I did before. Anyway, like I said before, you don't want these falling inside your engine, um, them flaps falling inside your engine. Um, it's just not what you want. So just replace them and get the job done. Along with the blank removal, I chose to do the gaskets at this time. Now what you see me wiping on here at the moment is just a bit, a bit of Vaseline. 
I did it for two reasons really. One is to make sure that the rubbers stick and stay in there and two is to give it a nice seal really, if I'm being honest. Um, my old gaskets were leaking a little bit and considering it was out of this time, I just decided to put them in, which was, you know, I just, why not? It's only a little bit extra. And some of these um, blanking plugs come with this whole gasket set. So I think it's a good thing to do while it's out. Look at that, looking beautiful, ready to go now. Okay, so now back at your car, what you want to do is you just want to clean up the surfaces. Now I used a bit of, a, I think it was 120 grit, no, not 120 grit. I think it might have been 200 grit sandpaper, something like that, quite fine. It was very fine, um, just to clean up the surfaces so it gets a good connection when it comes to sealing back again, because it will be full of crud, or mine was full of crud anyway. So give it a clean up and make sure it's gonna get a good connection. So now it's just about reversing what we did from before. You put back on that vacuum valve. Like I said, I changed a few hoses because they look cracked. Um, but once you've um, replaced them valves and you've taken all the tissue out, just manage this time to put back on the, um, the inlet manifold. Now be careful here. You wanna make sure nothing falls, nothing comes off. So try and get it on as smooth as possible on the guides. Once they're there, give it a nice shove and get it stuck down. So now neatly tying it up with it. Now all I did with this, I didn't tighten it up. It wasn't clicking, clicking, clicking. I just snugged it up. That's what I should call it, snugged it up. Um, but then yeah, that's it. Like I said, it's just a reverse of taking off. So reconnect all the wires, make sure you've got everything back together tighten up all these bolts and you know be careful make sure you're doing everything right because you don't want no problems here because I don't think you know where to find it if you do <laughs> okay so we're laying back the um, engine loom back over take your time try not to bully this too much it's very brittle like I said before just take your time plugging them in no forcing on this like I say these get very warm and they can get brittle so just take your time and be efficient on this. As you can see, I'm putting it all back together. See, it's simple as this, put your stuff back together and you've um, changed your swell flaps and protected your engine from, you know, any awful damage that could possibly happen by a sleepy, lazy design by BMW. So here's I started, no engine management lights, that means no vacuum hoses are missing and everything's working fine. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope it helped. Comment, rate, subscribe. Thank you for watching.